Well, good morning. Good morning. Wonderful it is to see everyone here today and uh, everyone online who's watching or that can't be here with us. Thank you for being here and welcome to Mayo Memorial United Methodist Church where we love God, we love people, and nothing else really matters. Uh, just some announcements before we get started. Uh, today we'll be having a charge conference. Uh, that is not open to everyone, though. I think it's just uh, lay leader, delegate, and uh, pastor is all that's uh, able to be joined with that. I think can you? I think it's online. Can you watch it online if you want to? On the Kentucky East District page. Okay, Kentucky East District. You can uh, if you would like uh, watch that this evening online at 6 p.m. And that's really all I have. Are there any other announcements that need to be brought to our attention? I guess I'm the other announcements. Good morning. Welcome this morning, like Bobby said, to Mayo Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Amy Chapman. What a joy to be together today in the house of the Lord here. See some visitors with us, some that have traveled from out of town, some that are newly returning here to worship, uh, some that are newly married that I know. As we come together here, we are unified in God's spirit, in the presence of the living God. How good it is to be together in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you would join your hearts with me in the call to worship. Coming from the Gospel of John today in the 7th chapter, the 37th and 38th verses. If you would respond in the bold print. Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come. Here we are, thirsting for the Lord. Scripture says, all who believe can drink. I believe. Come out of our hearts. Let the rivers of living water flow. Would you pray with me? O oh, holy and merciful God, at this time we bring to you our attention. And with that attention, O oh God, we bring our love and our desire to know your heart as we come to drink, to seek your presence here, to drink from your waters deeply, that our thirst may be quenched, so that we will be guided, O oh God, into the abundant life promised in Jesus Christ and in knowing him. Holy Spirit, Rest upon us here in this place. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We bring gifts to one another today in the form of the peace of Christ. What a gift it is to give our welcome, our attention, our love to one another. And so I invite you, if you would, to stand and to greet one another. And feel free to uh, greet your neighbor, to turn and shake a hand if you're comfortable in doing so. Greetings, of course, online. Welcome this morning. And if you would remain standing. And don't sit back down just yet, but turn in your hymnals as you return to your seats to hymn number 694 as we bring our thankful hearts together in worship. 694, let's sing together as thankful people.
am so excited to put this back in our bulletin and to invite the children, if they would like to do so, to come, especially if you brought some canned food offering today. We have a special place for you to put that. If you would come and join me here and bring your cans, I will meet you there. Bring the gift of harvest home. Whoops, you have that's a maze. Good job. Y'all knew you'd find your way. Welcome this morning. And if you're here, see if you can find the place. It's disguised a little bit. Very nice. There's already some things in there. Great work. Do either of you know? Good job. Thank you. That'll go to our Encounter Missions offering. Sit here with me for just a minute and I'll tell you a secret. There's something in here. Do you know what it is? No idea? Do any of the other children know what's in here? What stays in here in this? I'll give you a clue. Oh, <laughs> that's a good clue. Water, you guessed it. Water stays in here. This is a special kind of water. Do you want to help me pour it? This is water for baptism. To answer the call of Jesus and to be baptized. I wonder today if you've ever been thirsty. Uh, yeah, I drink chocolate milk. Oh, you drink chocolate milk when you're thirsty? What do you drink when you're thirsty? Water. water. What do you drink when you're thirsty? Any other answers from any of our kids? I like to drink water when I'm thirsty too. Chocolate milk when you're thirsty. We remember today that Jesus gives an invitation. Mostly water. Jesus gives an invitation to all who are thirsty. Or hungry. You're right. You're right. But Jesus gives a special kind of water. And it's the kind of water that we have in our baptism. It's the water of the Holy Spirit that helps us to not be thirsty in our spirits, to not be hungry in our spirits, but to rely on Jesus and the Holy Spirit to fill us up. How wonderful is that? Not Ellie. If you want to come and, and touch the water and remember your baptism today and remember that invitation of Jesus to drink from these waters, oh. it's kind of cold. <laughs> Now, would you take a straw and would you drink from that water? Uh, if it was in a cup. If it was in a cup. <laughs> we wouldn't want to drink the water out of there, would we? We just put our hands in it. So how do we, how do we drink this water that we're not thirsty anymore? That's a, oh, well, we could put it in a cup, but it's a bigger meaning than that. How could we drink from this water? Drink it out of the sink? This is a special kind of drinking that Jesus invites and it's a remembrance. It's to remember Jesus. You drink by coming here to church, by hearing God's word, by singing God's praise, by being together with God's people. That's the kind of thirsting. And you just drank some way really special because Jesus says that when we give to others, our cup is filled. It's bringing justice and righteousness in the world. We hunger and thirst for what is right, for what is good, and the Holy Spirit gives us that. Let's pray today for our children, and if you would like to go downstairs with Miss Donna and Miss Chris and Miss um, Christina, Miss Donna, you can follow Miss Christie. She'll show you downstairs, or you can go back to your seats. And there's some special things for you to do and to listen to here in worship. Let's pray today for our children. God, we thank you for this well that never runs dry, and we thank you that we can come again and again. God, make us hungry and make us thirsty for justice in the world, uh, to see our children grow and to seek mercy, to love justice, and to love you with their whole hearts. God, help us in this church to raise them up in the way that they should go, that they will not forget and will not leave. We thank you, God, for their presence here, and for all of us here. We say amen. Thank you all so much for being here today, for bringing your special offering, and you can bring more next week. We'll leave this here during our harvest collection. 
and we'll give that to people who need a little bit of a reminder of Jesus' love in their life. And some food. That's a good reminder. <laughs> Thank you all. While you're here, I'll do one more thing. We have a special... A special recognition today. This week we celebrated a holiday. You might have talked about it in your school. We, Halloween was a few weeks ago. <laughs> veterans Day. And we want to take a moment to say thank you to our veterans that are here in our church today. To those who are worshiping online. To honor them and thank them for their service to bring about justice and righteousness in the world that God so loved. So if we have any veterans here today in the congregation, I'd ask that you would stand. Any widows of veterans or any parents of veterans also, if you would stand that we might honor you today. Look at that. Will you give them a big hand? Thank you. Thank you all. Or if you want to go downstairs and have Christmas dinner. So we go into our time of sharing our uh, prayer joys and concerns. Our uh, birthdays this week. Uh, Sophie Burke is on the 16th. Also on the 16th, uh, Wilma Eldridge. And Brindlin Oosley on the night. Brindley. Brindley, sorry, Brindley, on the 19th. Are there any others uh, we've left out? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Any joys or prayer requests anyone would like to share? Bobby, I'll celebrate an anniversary as some new friends of ours, Sally and Clint, celebrated an anniversary and they were wed here in our church, been meeting with me at few times here these past few weeks and uh, decided they wanted to be part of our fellowship and wanted to join together in marriage and so we had a small service here with them this week and so we celebrate their union here today and I will ask you to welcome Sally and Clint Jennings. Congratulations. Any prayer requests? Any unspoken requests? Thank you. Anything? No one online? No prayer request? Any others? Well, if we will turn in our hymnals at this time for our prayer hymn, number 400, and you may remain seated for number 400.
The Lord be with you. A righteous and just Father, we thank you this morning that you are good. That without you, O oh God, there is no righteousness. We thank you, God, for our time of worship here, the way it calls and centers our hearts in your spirit. God, wake us up this morning. Open our eyes and our hearts and our ears that we might see your presence all around us, that we might truly love you. Lord, we pray. We pray for those who seek justice in their own lives today. We pray for those who seek justice in our legal systems, for those who seek justice in society, for those who seek economic justice, for those who seek justice in education, for those who seek justice in their homes, for those who seek justice in their own lives and persecutions, for those who face injustice of any sort for any reason. God, you are the one true and right judge. God, we also especially lift up our veterans. We thank you for them, for their sacrifice for our country to defend justice, even if it has meant that they too become victims of injustice. Today, O Lord of hosts, we pray that we would be persons who can lead others to the fount from which streams of justice and living water flow so that we too might learn what it is to be made righteous in your sight by your grace through your son, Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you for this community, for what it means to us here, for what it means to those who are seeking you. And God, we just ask that we would surrender our whole hearts to you in this time of prayer, that we would fill you with us, O oh God, that we would know that you are near, that you are tending us, like our brother Bill Tom reminded us. Sometimes, O oh God, we're surprised when prayers are answered. Sometimes we're surprised when you hear us. Sometimes we forget to expect goodness. God, we know that you have good in mind for us today, and we trust you in our prayers as we pray for those whom we have named for our brother Bill Tom for continued healing and mercy in his life and in his body. In your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. I lift to you in the name of Paul Greiner, who's asked to be added to our prayers this morning. For Paul and for Jan, in your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, for those especially who are grieving, God, what a weight that is sometimes just too difficult to come out from under. God, we know that you are working to lift that burden. Help us, oh God, to bring it to you today, to feel the ease and the weight removed from our shoulders. God, you are faithful and strong to carry our burdens. So, God, for all those who grieve, in your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, for all those who have raised hands in faith today, knowing that you hear even better than we can ask or pray. For all the needs that we name to you now, even in the silence of our hearts, in your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we thank you for the words of Assurance that Jesus Christ has given us as we join now our voices to pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen.
morning psalter this morning uh, comes from Psalm 63, uh, verses 1 through 4. It can be found in your pew Bibles on page 561, if you'd like to follow. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, uh, if you can't be here with us, uh, the ways you can give, uh, you may mail it at P.O. Box 669, Paintsville, Kentucky, uh, or you can give uh, through mayochurch.org online. Uh, and as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, may we reflect on how gracious God has been to us. Thank you. Let us pray. God, how good it is to give from an overflowing abundance that comes from our hearts. God, we ask that you would receive our offering this morning out of our desire to do your will here on earth as it is in heaven. And, oh God, thank you for the ability to give. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning again. How exciting to move along in our narrative lectionary season, in our, in, our, in our liturgical season. Believe it or not, we are only a couple of short weeks away from the season of Advent. Hard to believe. Although I've seen a lot of you already preparing for Christmas. <laughs> so we're not there yet, but I am so excited uh, to celebrate this season of harvest, of gathering with you 
of celebrating God's bounty, of bringing in the sheaves. I love that old song. You remember that one? Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We will come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. I'm, I'm a singer, if you <laughs> didn't know that about me. If I think of a song, I just kind of let it, let it go. But I think about that in the season of harvest. And I think today, as we turn to the prophet Amos, we're reminded of God's wonderful bounty, of how wonderful it is to give and how easy it is to hoard. We come today recognizing that God calls us to be a blessing, to be blessed and to be a blessing. Last week we heard about the prophet Elijah who worked in the northern kingdom of Israel attempting to bring the king and therefore the nation back to God's way, calling to repentance. And when God spoke to Elijah in that cleft of the mountain in the silence, of the wind, God told Elijah to go back to anoint a new king in Syria and a new king in Israel. And finally, he accepted Elijah's resignation. <laughs> we heard last week Elijah's weariness. He was ready to quit. He pressed on a little longer. And finally, God allowed him to anoint a new prophet to pick up his mantle and to carry on the work that he had began. And so Elijah did that and he passed his mantle to Elisha, who became a strong and famous prophet who spoke truth the community needed to hear and also performed miracles. But the kings persisted, even still, in their unfaithful ways, despite the prophet Elisha's work. And so today, we hear another attempt from the prophet Amos who also is working in the northern kingdom, even though he's from the south. But he's about 100 years later after Elijah and is one of the first prophets we know that wrote down the word of the Lord. These prophets often wrote in poetry to appeal to the kings and the elites who thrived on injustice and corruption, watching while ordinary people suffered. Amos was one of those ordinary people. We hear in the introduction that we find in Amos that he was a shepherd in the southern kingdom. And so we read today from the book of the prophet Amos, verses uh, from chapters 1 and 5. I'll bounce around. I'll encourage you if you have some time this afternoon and in, in your time and in your time in God's word to uh, go ahead and read all of the prophet Amos. It's a short book. It's an incredible call uh, to repentance and um, to be right with God who is righteous. I'm reading today from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, if you want to turn in your pew Bibles to page 899 and read along with me that we might hear together what the Lord has to say to us who are in his hearing today. This is the prophet Amos starting at chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. The words of Amos who was among the shepherds of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of King Uzziah of Judah and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of Joash of Israel, two years before the earthquake. And he said, The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds wither and the top of Mount Carmel dries up. And then skipping over to chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, Amos writes that the Lord says, Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. And then verses 21 through 24, God says, I hate, no, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of God. 
for we who are the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? O God of all people, of all creation, show us now how to let justice roll down like water, how to drink from the fountain that never runs dry. Bring righteousness, O God, like an ever-flowing stream. Create justice and righteousness in us, in this place now, as we open our hearts to receive your Holy Spirit. And, O God, may all who are here today rejoice in your blessings. O God, be with me, the one who preaches. May my words be pleasing to you, O God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love this image that Amos opens his book with, the image of God as a lion. It's a prominent vision throughout the narrative of Scripture, and today we encounter God as a roaring lion the prophet Amos who calls the people to repent and turn to God. Now I don't know if you've heard a lion roar but it demands attention doesn't it? And so if we open and we hear God as a roaring lion there should be a holy hush and Amos opens with that. God is roaring like a lion and he calls to the people to repent from injustices in their kingdom and to turn once again to God in the hopes that God would hear them and would have mercy. If you've ever been near a lion, hopefully not too close, but maybe you've heard a lion roar on TV or in a movie or in a safe environment, (laughs) you know that lions roar when what? When they are hungry, when they're ready to eat. They also roar when they want to show their strength. I love this image of God as a lion, so much so it's ingrained in my mind. Uh, I always think of God. Even when I pray sometimes, I see this image of a lion of Judah. It's one of, the, one of the images that just, I get it for some reason, that God as a lion. Not, uh, as C.S. Lewis says, he's not a tame lion, but he's a good lion. I love the uh, the words that C.S. Lewis gives us, that imagery in the Chronicles of Narnia. Any other fans have read the, that series of books? You've read those series? You'll know what I'm talking about then when I speak of Aslan. And I'm going to talk about Aslan a little bit. I'm going to talk about two different lions. Aslan, the great king lion. And then a little bit later, I'm going to give a nod to our local theater production here of the, the cowardly lion, the Wizard of Oz. But the, the first lion I want us to consider today is Aslan. Aslan is a lion when we first meet Aslan, the Pevensey children are in Narnia and they're around the table of, of the beaver family. And they've, they've never heard, they have not even heard of the prophecy. And Susan says, Aslan is a lion? I thought he would be a man. The lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. I would too, right? <laughs> but what, what's in Narnia is, is okay. If we were here in in this world, maybe we wouldn't feel very safe. But safe, says Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. And that is the the, the image that conjures up in my mind when I think of God. He's not safe. God's not, not safe, anything but. And he's not tame, but he is good. We can't use him for our ways or manipulate, manipulate him to our, our will, but he is good. He can be trusted. C.S. Lewis gives us this picture in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And he follows this picture all through this series of books until finally we come to the last series of, of the book called The Last Battle. And we meet a young prince named Tyrion. And Tyrion and his unicorn, Jewel, again, this is <laughs> uh, children's fiction books here, but they're, they're deep. Hang with me. It's not just a children's story, but you can read them to children over and over again and, and find new things. But it's a very, very deep, profound parable of what I feel like is the, the narrative of the gospel and of, of the kingdom of God. And in this last battle book, we meet Tyrion. And Tyrion... Um, to sum up a little bit for you, but no spoiler alerts necessarily, there is a, a imposter in the land. And the imposter finds a lion's skin, and he throws it over his back and pretends in the dark to be the great lion Aslan. 
And uh, Tyrion, who's in some trouble in, in the kingdom, uh, decides to go and to see Aslan and to confess himself. And he's nervous about this, and his unicorn companion, Jewel, is nervous for him to go and to trust himself to Aslan, who is the fake Aslan, again, not the real Aslan. But Tyrion works up the, the courage to go, and, and this, is the, this is the passage here from uh, the, the last battle. He says, again, recalling from the first passage, he's not a tame lion, said Tyrion. How should we know what he would do? We who are murderers, Jewel, I will go back. I will give up my sword and put myself in the hands of these Calamarines and ask that they bring me before Aslan. Let him do justice on me. And Jewel pleads with, with Tyrion to not go, to not put himself at Aslan's mercy, the fake Aslan's mercy. And Jewel says, you will go to your death then. And this is, this is the part that I want us to consider today uh, first and foremost. Tyrion says, do you think I care if Aslan dooms me to death, says King Tyrion. That would be nothing, nothing at all. Would it not be better to be dead than to have this horrible fear that Aslan has come and is not like the Aslan we have believed in and longed for? It is as if the sun rose one day and were a black sun. I know, said Jewel. Or as if you drank water and it were dry water. You are in the right, sire. This is the end of all things. Let us go and give ourselves up. And Tyrion says, there's no need for both of us to go. And the companion says, if ever we loved one another, let me go with you now, said the unicorn. If you are dead, and if Aslan is not Aslan, what life is left for me? What a powerful image to place ourselves in God's mercy and to trust that he is good. Not tame, not safe, but good. As if you drank water and it were dry water. As if the sun, you woke up one day and it were different. It was a black sun. What would be left? And so they go and they put themselves at Aslan's mercy. I'll let you read the rest of the story for yourself. Um, Please do someday. Put that on your bucket list if you haven't read The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Uh, definitely spend some time reading those. But I wonder in light of, of this parable and in light of the prophet Amos's call to repentance today to Israel, if we might also consider a call to repentance that we might hear God as a roaring lion in us today. I don't know about you, but my stomach roars when I'm hungry. My spirit roars when I see injustice in the world, when I see people being treated unfairly, living in poor conditions. I wonder if we might consider our acts of worship today, if they are somehow misplaced. I wonder if we might consider why our call, our bent to doing good, tends to run out sometimes. Have you noticed that? Like we go in seasons a little bit of wanting to help and wanting to do good. Uh, we go from this view of scarcity uh, to a view of, of, of hoarding, um, to, to storing it all up for ourselves instead of sharing the bounty and trusting that there will be enough for everyone. I know times that myself, when I start to worry that there won't be enough, times that I lose patience, and those are times when I do, times when I see that people are taking too much or times that I lose my focus, I have to put myself back in check a little bit. And I hear that roaring today. I hear that roaring that Amos is talking about over the people of Jerusalem. I hear it here today even in our own society. I feel a grumbling and a, a, a discomfort within myself to speak up, to have courage to do justice to put my focus back on the giver of all good things and to go like Tyrion before the mercy of the king of Aslan and to trust that he is good and that if he's not, what do I have to lose? 
It would be as if I was drinking from dry water. Imagine such a thing. Friends, good works only leave us frustrated. Doing them over and over come to an endless amount of frustration. We have to drink first from this well. We have to be able to understand what it means to live in God's grace, to trust God's mercy, to come again and again to this fountain, to remember our baptism, to trust God's mercy, to hunger and thirst for mercy, to be led in righteousness for the namesake of God. Our baptismal waters aren't meant to lie stagnant or to dry up. If we go back to that imagery that Amos gives of Mount Carmel drying up, it's where there was plenty, but there were all kinds on the top of Mount Carmel. That's where the false gods were, were being worshipped. If we remember back to the prophet Elijah, that's where the great trial came, the battle came last week when we talked about Elijah. And on one side we had the false god Baal covered in the lion's dead skin standing there trying to convince people that he was God. And on the other side, we had the one true God who burnt up the offering and proved that he was God. And this place now that Amos speaks of is dry and desolate. It's run out. Jesus brings living water that never runs dry. And there are free refills, friends. There are free refills. You can come again and again to this fountain and drink from the abundance that flows. We know that when Jesus was crucified, this is the living water that flows from his side. How beautiful to lay down the life that you know and to allow yourself to flow into others that justice might come. This is is how we bring about justice in the world. Not by doing good, but by trusting God to do good for us and in us. And out of that love, out of that obedience, out of that trust of God, we worship, we come. We learn how to truly love one another. How to love God and love people not from ourselves, not from works that we can do or conjure up, but that God gives us mercy and grace freely and fully. And now we turn to the cowardly lion image. What a great irony to be king of the forest in all its glory and splendor and to live in fear. Friends, that is us. We who are fearfully and wonderfully made cowering under what we think we know, under who we think we are, under who, what we've been told we are, and afraid to ask God, afraid to pray, afraid to trust, afraid to believe that God is for us. And so we pray today for the courage to do justice, just as the cowardly lion makes the journey to the Emerald City to ask the wizard for courage. We again make this journey to the throne room of God to ask once again that God would give us courage to seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. May it be so today. In the name of our beloved Christ, I want to invite you to turn in your hymnals as, as we close with this prayer together in unity on page 456. As Bethany comes uh, today for a song of, of reflection, turn to page 456 in your hymnals. And let's pray this prayer together. O oh Lord, Open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so that they need not be without succor. Let me not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong. 
nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show me where love and hope and faith are needed and use me to bring them to those places. And so open my eyes and my ears that I may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for thee. Amen. Allow your hearts to listen and to be still now uh, during this time of reflection. Beloved, repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come, you are loved more than you can even imagine. God is with you and God is for you. The king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, always my song. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, always my song. Cause you are good, good, oh. Let's pray. Oh, holy God, forgive us when we have put our faith, put our trust in systems that will fail us. We have put our trust in one another in times that we have been disappointed. God, we recognize our own fault, our own blame in those times. And God, we repent and we come anew today asking, oh God, that you would give us a fresh start. Give us, O oh God, clean hands and pure hearts as we confess and put our trust back in you, the one true God. You are good, and you never will let us down. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, if you would, to stand on these truths this morning of the historic Christian faith as we turn to the Apostles' Creed. 
and we remember this is what we believe. This is what we can stand on. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. closing hymn of invitation today as we continue to respond is that the Holy Spirit would open our eyes and hearts as we seek justice in the world, as we seek God in our lives. Number 454, let us sing together this closing anthem of prayer.
The love of the light of Christ goes before you, flowing out of your hearts like a living stream of water. Go, fill your cup, and in turn, fill the cups of those that God brings before you. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Go forth in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.